Hi, everybody. Ah, haven't been streaming in a while. Good to see anybody that uh, stops by. So today I have a uh, M2 MacBook Air. This is from last year. This is a 2022 model MacBook Air with the uh, Apple Silicon M2 processor on it. And it's here for liquid damage. So the only complaint that the customer has, it's actually working. It's very lightly liquid damaged. Um, the, the problem is, is that it has no Wi-Fi, no Wi-Fi, no Bluetooth. So, uh, this is very different from any of the other machines that we've had in the past. Um, huge changes have been made in the last couple years in the design and construction of all of the Apple products. Uh, the Air seems to be the one that is the most different. Uh, the Pro, it still has a lot of similarities. The Air is extremely different. It's a one-sided board. The other side has absolutely zero components on it. And, um, yeah, let's, let's take a look in this board. I, I have the schematic. I haven't really delved into it that much. It, it reads like a, um, a iPad now the, with the, the Aeon uh, power lines and stuff like that. So... It's going to take some getting used to uh, coming up in the next couple of years when these things start filtering down to us a lot more than they have. So uh, let's take a look at this board, and uh, even though it's very foreign, I believe there's some stuff that looks a little bit similar to what we're used to, and there's some stuff that we can identify from previous models. So let's get into it. So we'll start out here at the edge this is the inputs so that that looks normal the the normal nova stack connectors for the uh, usb-c inputs and uh cd 3217s okay that that's normal i understand them i understand the architecture of that so uh yeah anything with input or output or usb communication should be easily um troubleshot because this is cd 3217s they're they're understandable not sure what these wind bond uh, chips are now, though. If these are the new ROM chips for the CD3217s, we have wind bond chips here. We never had wind bond chips anywhere near the CDs before. I continue down a little bit. You got normal buck regulator chips and all of these uh, giant coils. Oh, look at that. This is the new ISL. So it's no longer the ISL 9240 or 9239, but there's telltale signs that this is the um, battery charging chip. It, it doesn't say ISL, and Intersil is huge for putting ISL on there, so maybe it's not made by Intersil? I don't know. We could look it up on the schematic, actually. Um, but yeah, there's, there's telltale signs that that's what it is, is the battery charging chip, because... Uh, you got here, these are the current sense, One, one's going to the battery, one's going to the, um, uh, what would be PP bus, but it's called something else on this. So that, that's, that's very familiar, the architecture of that's very familiar. Keep looking around, uh, these look familiar just in architecture, I don't know these numbers, but this looks like a, um, uh, audio amplifier section. So that's probably the, um... That's probably the uh, speaker connector, and these are the two audio amplifiers, one for the uh, high and one for the low. So that, that, looks, that looks familiar. I can deal with that, yeah. There's a Renosis chip here. I'm not sure exactly what that does. A lot of buck regulators, a lot of uh, filtering. What is this chip? Don't know what that is. And there's our issue. So uh, we'll, we'll come back to that. Uh, there's an Apple, probably, um, since it's surrounded by, by coils, all of these coils around here, I'm guessing this is the PMIC. This is, this is where all the power rails are made for everything. This is going to be all 1 volt and 3 volt power rails all coming out of this. Unfortunately, they finally retired my favorite power rail chip. So the, there's one power rail chip that has been on these boards, uh, on Apple boards for many, many, many years. And I find it on other boards. I've changed it on other um, laptops, Lenovo's and stuff like that. It is one of the sturdiest, most long-lived 
buck regulator chips I've ever seen, the TPS51980. That thing for 3.3 volts and 5 volts is on a plethora of different boards, and it has been a workhorse for designers to use that in all kinds of boards. Unfortunately, it's gone now. I'm sad to see it go because that was just a really sturdy chip. It, it's, it took a lot of abuse on the old um, MacBook Air boards. It always got liquid damaged and nothing ever happened to it. So PMIC, uh, this is the battery connector. This is how the battery is now connecting to the uh, to the uh, board itself. Now that, that makes sense, the PMIC right next to the battery. Yeah. The battery controller all the way over here though. Now move on, here's the um, M2 with its built on RAM. I've seen that chip before, not sure what it is. Never seen this guy, NXP. That's weird. And these are the uh, NANs for the SSD. So I'm guessing this is Apple's SSD controller or some kind of interface to interface the SSD to the, um, the processor. Not sure how all this architecture goes with this now. And another audio amplifier and another speaker connector. That sure looks like a regular um, regular uh, screen connector. So this is what we're uh, what we're concerned with. Let me move this more in the center. So this looks like any of the other Wi-Fi and Bluetooth chips. Of course, you've got the antenna connectors that are dead giveaway right next to it. We look uh, look down in here. And this is where, so the, the liquid damage just snipered this. It came out of nowhere and just, just one drop, bam, right on top of this, uh, this current sense resistor right here. So I already Q-tipped it a bunch and it still looks like garbage. But um, looking at this, I noticed, uh, so th this, is the, this is what actually handles the current, these two pads here. And then these two pads here are basically connected to the same thing, um, but they're connected through the resistor and it goes to the controller that's sensing current. So this is a current sense resistor and this would be the chip that senses current and it's missing. So th this is definitely, it hasn't been rotted off here or anything, it just was never put down here. So I'm looking at this when I first opened it up and I first started looking at it. So there's a current sense resistor. They, they spent the money to put a current sense resistor on, but the current sense is no longer being used. So it was probably here for building and testing purposes. Uh, they, they wanted to see how much current things would use, but then in production, they don't need that anymore, so they just delete it. Um, the schematic, if we go over to the schematic, Where are you, mouse? There you are. Uh, if we look at here, so here we are here. Here's the two antenna connectors. Here's the chip. Here's our current sense resistor. And there's our current sense uh, chip. So if I right click on it, search, it'll bring it up on the schematic. And there is no indication anywhere here. I, I looked at it quickly and there's no indication anywhere here that it is um, no stuffed. Oh, maybe here, sensors dev. So this, is, this was only here for development. This is, that's probably what this means. Same with this, keyboard, five volt, sensors dev. I bet this one doesn't exist either. We could test that theory. So development sensor, this was probably only here for development and that's it. Camera's frozen? What do I have coming out? Uh, it may have froze, but it looks good now. 
So let's let's uh, test that theory. So this uh, keyboard LED is also um, sensor dev. So let's right click on that. That brings up the location here. So that's in the bottom corner here, right next to the um, the output. Uh, the, the, this this connector here is for the audio board or whatever else they have going on. So if I switch over to microscope, let's uh, let's shoot our way over there. There's the connector, and there is the no stuff. So the, the current sense resistor is still there. Current sense resistor is still there, but yeah, the chip that's supposed to be sensing it is no stuff. So yeah, that then what I'm thinking is correct. When we look at this and you see sensors dev, that means that these sensors were only here for development. Actually, let's check the bottom corner. Sensors power low side. It does not say anything about that there. Oh, sensor production. There you go. That's a good indication. So this says sensor production. And this says sensors development. So this is a no stuff. This, this is not here. So let's go back to the board where what I'm looking at right here next to the Wi-Fi. So th this is no stuff. This is not here. And so they didn't bother to change the board itself. I guess they, they were already in production or something. So they, they didn't just cap this over like they do on, uh, let me bring in another board. So the old MacBook Air, this is the A1466, the 00165 board, my favorite board in existence. This is the hardiest board ever. This board survives just about everything except um, an exploded uh, CPU. <laughs> it's the, one of the only things that will kill this board is an exploded CPU. Uh, but let's take a look. This is what I want to look at over here. This was supposed to be a current sense resistor. There is one right here. This was supposed to be a current sense resistor. The current sense um, part is no stuffed because they, this was a development current sense. But this is just solid. Underneath here, if I were to scrape away at this, if I have a knife, knife, who stole my knife? I do not have a blade over here. I'll just use these. Don't ever scrape with your tweezers. Do as I say, not as I do. So this entire thing is no longer two pads like what it looks like. It was, this was a, a development sensor and then when they put the board into production, it's just one solid piece of copper that goes right underneath this. The pads are still printed in the, um, in the solder mask, but this is all just one piece of copper all underneath here. It's no longer separated. You can kind of see the indentation here. So that's what they used to do, and then now they don't bother doing that. I guess the production is a different timing or something like that. So now they um, they just leave the current sense resistor without putting the current sensing chip in. But yeah, this was completely rotted off the board, and if we take a look at um, the schematic on the wrong one, right here. This is our current sense resistor that we're looking at. This is PP3V8A on wireless. So this all goes to the Wi-Fi, everything for wireless. So Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi are all uh, taken care of by this chip. And this is its main power from PP3V8A on. So this resistor being corroded is exactly why the Wi-Fi is not turning on. So we can delete this. I don't need to find another one of these because this is just being used as a jumper. I don't need to try to clean this, although I probably could. It doesn't look that bad. 
I could probably clean this and just put this back. Let's try that first. Just for the hell of it. I'm going to try to clean this up and we'll put that back. First, I need to find my, my blade. There it is. Hiding behind the solder pump. So let's clean up the board first, and then I'll worry about the resistor. So a little bit of scrape, scrape. Ooh, look at that. We just took that entire pad off of there. That little bit of scraping that I just did, all we have left is vias. That's how much that pad was corroded. And all we have left is vias. So this is this should be okay because we have all the vias exposed here. So if I if, if I get that um, current sense resistor fixed up, then we could just uh, pop it right on top of this, and it will connect all of those together all on its pad. So that that should be okay. This side looks a lot better because yeah, as soon as this got corroded. This maintained power, because this is the pow incoming power, so that stayed on. This, though, this gets disconnected as soon as it gets corroded, so this gets less corrosion. Okay, let's get a brush in here. Get down in between things with the brush bristles. Uh, we have one capacitor that looks kind of nasty. Let's see what this capacitor is for. This one doesn't look like it's con yep, it's not connected anymore. Let's see if that looks like it might be important. We might have to find a replacement for that one. Open board view, and let's see, that is this one here. So that is nothing more than one of many capacitors that are here to filter. So that doesn't seem like it's going to present an issue if we leave that out. That should be okay. Uh, what might be a concern is this larger one does not look very good. Let's see. And the larger one looks pretty damaged. I'd like to replace that. We'll solder it up and see how it solders. If that plating comes back to life with some solder and only that corner's gone, then we should be okay. So first, uh, let me check and make sure that nothing's shorted. So I got my multimeter in beep mode. I don't know if you could hear that. Well, ground and here, no shorts. Ground, ground, no shorts, okay. So nothing here is bad. And all we did was lose power, so the chip should be fine too. All we need to do is restore power and this should be fine. Let's see what value this big capacitor is. 10 microfarad, 10 volt, 402. I think I have them in my book. Let me check. Because the, the book doesn't go up to 10, but I think we see 10 enough that I ordered them. Oops, these are resistors. Where's capacitors? This is 201 capacitor, 603, 201 resistor. I do not see my 402 capacitor book. Why am I missing so much stuff? Is it over here? It's over here. It's on the desk. Okay, 402 capacitor. So this is a 
402, 10 microfarad. I do have 10 microfarad in here. So this will do. So we're changing that big capacitor. There's one replacement. Let's get this stuff out of here, get things tinned. Let's get to work. A little bit of flux. Some fume extraction. Get some solder on all of these points. Oh, yeah, that took solder well. That that'll be great. That resistor cleaned up nicely. Yeah, that that pad'll be fine with the with all of it connected like that. Some clean solder on that. Oh, uh, I don't, I'd rather not use hot air in this corner, if I can avoid it. I'm going to try to get this out of here with just this. I'd have to, you know, let me get the other handle. Yeah, that's not hot enough. We'll go for the other hand piece. Gotta watch the one I'm touching underneath it. Come on. There we go. I think that pad needs a little bit of scrapey scrape. Okay, I'm going to have to get some hot air in here just to preheat the board, I think. I'm just going to have to put this back down with hot air. Because this, this ground point is uh, substantial enough that it's giving all of my irons a hard time. our new capacitor. These capacitors also have a little standoff on them to uh, separate them from the board. It's just for heat or something, I think. Get some flux all over that, and I guess I'm going to hot air this in. Now this is, this is very delicate. You have to know your equipment, know how it works, know where it's putting heat, because I'm working right next to an underfilled chip.
Okay, that revealed that that was bad. Let's take a look at that other capacitor that came off the board. That was bad. So that is directly underneath what we were working on. That's this one. PP1V8S2, and that is uh, just one of many filtering caps. Oh uh, yeah, look at them all. There's some filtering caps. So that will be fine if that doesn't go back as well. off of that pad at least. Okay, that looks okay. And now let's see if we can fix this uh, current sense resistor, which I may have lost. Oops. I put it off to the side. Now I don't see it. I may have blown it away with hot air. Oh, there it is. Found it. All right. Um, this is kind of unnecessary. I could just run a wire on this. But this guy's not that damaged. So I'm going to put him back. Put back this happy little resistor with his happy friends. I don't know if I was... Uh, born into existence and then placed in a little community down here next to this chip and then removed that'd be sad this guy doesn't have to be removed we can put him back Perfect, beautiful, wonderful, love it. I just want to make sure that it's connected to the, was it, 3, 3v8? So let's find somewhere, anywhere else, the 3v8. So these giant capacitors here, 
3v8 is connected to. So I'll test from one of these to this guy that I just replaced and see what type of uh, resistance we have. I can kind of get that all in one frame. Yeah. So hopefully this is just straight shorted. We just want that to this. Yep. Perfect. Half an ohm. That is what that current sense resistor is. Half an ohm. So uh, that should be it. Hopefully. Clean this up a little bit with a Q-tip. How is that view? I've given up on using this um, Microsoft webcam as an overhead camera because it just does not have the megapixels or the focusing. It actually wants to focus close. So now it's on top of the fume extractor. It's just inches away from the board. And now it's a little bit different view, a little bit wider view than the microscope. Eventually I'll get some kind of better webcam or something for an overhead camera. Something with a zoom lens so I can actually change the framing. Alright, so that is a repair of the M2 MacBook Air. And like I said, the back of it is completely blank. There's, there's nothing on the back of it but an EMI shield, some kind of stickers on the back of it. Thanks for joining me. Now I have to uh, put this back together and have to refer to some pictures that I took earlier of taking it apart because this is the first one of these that I have taken apart and put back together. And like I said, everything is different from what we expect as the old ones. Hopefully the thermal paste is enough there, although I, this thick thermal paste is showing up on everything and the only place that I know to get it is from uh, TCRS circuits. I don't know uh, who sells the thick thermal paste. If it's uh, if TCR sells it directly or if he goes through a distributor for it. But he's the only one that has this thick black thermal paste that's now showing up in everything. Maybe I did see somebody else had it somewhere, but Tim's is good. A little bit more corrosion down here, but it's on nothing, just on a screw hole. Probably look down in that corner, make sure that that chip is okay. Yeah, it didn't get underneath the shield. This thing doesn't even look like a logic board when you take it out, because it has a shield over the entire top of it. It's like back in the, um, the early 2000s, when you started open, opening up car hoods, and you didn't even see the engine. It was just this plastic escutcheon that masks the entire engine. That's exactly what Apple is doing now. You take the bottom off the, the MacBook and you don't see a logic board anymore. All you see is a flat shield. There's, there's no view of anything. It's weird. I, so I used to be an automotive mechanic and it's amazing how many parallels I've seen through all of my working on electronics, transitioning into working on laptops. The, the, the the similarities are just uncanny between cars and computers. Just even dealing with customers and everything, it's the same things between cars and computers.
So thanks for joining me. Uh, hopefully I'll be back with some more. I'm going to find some more interesting things. I have some photography stuff that I want to stream. I have a really cool one that I want to do. So at a garage sale, um, I came across uh, an old uh, camera. I have one of these cameras already, but I bought it anyway just because it still has a roll of film in it. And it's uh, advanced a couple, uh, a couple frames, so somebody took some pictures on this thing. So I want to do a stream of uh, developing that with the story and everything. I think that would be pretty cool. What is the best, best MacBook in my opinion? So the, my favorite one is the MacBook Air. It's getting long in the tooth, and, but they, they still run well. I don't have an Air reachable. Um, the, the 1466 MacBook Air, the one, the 00165 board, this one. It is hardy. It is, the only bad, the only downside to the entire thing is the screen resolution. The screen resolution on the old Air kind of sucks, but I, I don't care. The thing is portable, it's hardy, it, the battery lasts well. I really, really like the old Air. Um, unfortunately, the new software and everything is kind of outmodding all of them. They, you can get um, up to 2019 manufactured 1466s. Uh, after 2017, I think they were discontinued um, uh, retail, but they still manufactured them up to 2019 for uh, schools. So you can still find up to 2019 1466 MacBook Airs. Um, they run amazing. They, they're hardy, they're indestructible, they just, they're really good machines. But nowadays, um, I like anything before the T2. So the, the 17 series, the 1707, 1706, 1708, they're, they're good. They, they run pretty well. Um, they're, they're powerful, they're good machines. Everything after the T2, I don't like. And anything with the T2, the, the, if you do like Apple and MacBook, the M1, the, the Apple processors, they're spectacular. They're lousy on repairability. Um, God knows what you're going to be able to do with them in a couple years' time when Apple stops supporting them for software. But for now, they run the doors off of anything else running Mac OS. They're, they perform really well. They're really good on battery. They're really good on power consumption. Um, they, they barely produce any heat for all the processing that they do. Apple did something right with the, the um, M processors. But time will tell. Not too sure about all of them yet. Time will tell. But yeah, the, the M processors run really good. I like the 17 series for everything else, for running Windows. Uh, and all around pick is the 1466, but it is getting old. So if you just need a computer to browse the web, send emails, watch YouTube. The 1466 is, is my pick. If you need to do more um, important stuff, uh, like video editing, uh, photo editing, anything like that, then the 17 series is good. And if you need a powerhouse computer that just does everything right now, for now anyway, the, the M series runs really good. Never seen an i7 MacBook Air in the workshop. I actually think I have one somewhere. I think I have one and it actually works. Uh, I was going to refurbish it and sell it, but I think I want to keep that one just because it is the i7. Is this it? Yes. 2016 i7 2.2, 8 gigs of RAM, and it has a dead battery. And I've been using it to um, format uh, um, SSDs. So when I sell a machine and I have to do the, the format and all that stuff, I do it on this. Yeah, I was going to sell it, but I don't want to give it up. <laughs> But I've never, yeah, but like you said, I've never seen one in the shop for repair. <laughs> you have about 11 of them? That's awesome. <laughs> I 
1502 was a good running machine. Yeah, but Staingate definitely affected all of them. But yeah, the, the 17 series, 1707, 1706. I have a 1707. So, unfortunately, this is my... Now, this is a customer's 2141 that's dead. This is my 1707. And this is my 1707 that needs a new um, graphics processor. So, GPU went dead in that. Um, this is my 1707 GPU, which I got off of a donor board that had a dead CPU, so this should be a good GPU. Uh, I just got the stencils for it all and everything, so I need to go ahead and replace this. Um, I might do a stream of it, or maybe just a video of it, I don't know. I'm scared of the whole process. I don't have a Zalmao, I don't have any kind of big machine, so I'm going to be doing it with a... Um, infrared preheater plate and just by hand with the JBC. We'll see how it goes. I should be able to do it. It shouldn't be that big of a problem. Which thermal paste for... So the regular thermal paste I use um, MX4. I have no problem with with MX4. It, it seems to run really well. There's better ones out there, but this just seems to be a good middle ground between price and performance. Uh, this one, this is the black thick stuff. This is uh, TCRS circuits, carbon black. Um, this is Tim Tim Herman. The he's on YouTube. Uh, he he just owns a shop just just like I do. Uh, just a little shop in California. But uh, he's in a really good manufacturing center in uh, California, and I guess uh, somebody in his family or something has background in chemical manufacturing, or just he's in the area for that, so he got into chemical manufacturing, and now he's doing uh, uh, thermal pastes and um, fluxes. So he's got the Citra Flow flux and the carbon black thermal paste, and then he also has a regular thermal paste that's uh, being sold too. I haven't tried his regular thermal paste yet, but the carbon black is really good. Uh, the Citra Flow is pretty good. Um, I'm used, I'm really used to my um, Amtec, but I'm starting to use the Citra Flow more and more. In your 1398 PCHs I've done with the... I've done them without even um, an IR plate. And not even an attachment. So I, I do have the, the big square attachment for the other hot air that I might use. But yeah, just uh, this JVC without the, um, the end piece took off a PCH no problem on a 1398. Northwest Repair doing GPUs. Cool. Yeah, the only thing I'm worried about is just the alignment. Just, uh, th these, these balls are spread out enough. Like, if, if we take a look at this, the ball pattern is friendly enough. Let's see what this looks like. Ah, looks pretty good. The ball pattern's friendly enough to eyeball this. So the, the, the ends are aligned, uh, are, are pretty close together, but the, the interior being so spaced apart will just make it want to snap into place where it needs to be. So it shouldn't be that bad doing it by hand. Have a good night. Time for me to finish up the day here anyway. What time is it? Oh yeah, I close in four minutes. So yeah, I shouldn't have a problem with it. I need to find my, uh, my IR plate. Somewhere. Probably up in the attic. Somewhere. But yeah, uh, thanks for stopping by, guys. Good seeing you. Good talking to everybody. 
and uh, yeah, have a good night.